Hello, boys and girls. Once again, it's Mr. Rooch, fourth grade teacher, Juniata Gap Elementary School. And once again, I'm in my recording studio in the basement of my house. This will be the final video you will view before your long awaited Thanksgiving break. So at this time, I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, enjoy the time off, and do me one big favor. Please encourage the adults in your house to come and meet with your teachers during parent-teacher conferences, which are being held Monday evening, November 23rd, and Tuesday morning, November 24th. It's a valuable piece that we need to put together to help you all become the best you can be. So bug those adults in your home to come to parent-teacher conferences. Now, today's lesson is, a, is another practice assessment activity. This is the unit one and unit two combined practice assessment activity. Only nine questions, but it combines the skills that you have learned when combining units one and two, the first fourth of our school year. So what will you need? Well, you will definitely need two pieces of paper and a pencil. Once you have these items, you will place a heading at the top of your paper. And the heading would be the same as the heading I have on the screen right now. Units one and two, practice. I'm sorry, practice assessment activity. You will show all your work. It is just not good enough to have an answer on your paper. Please show the work you did to get that answer. Now it's okay to use a calculator on a lot of these problems, but you need to write the actual problem out so your teachers can see that you truly understand how to solve the problem. Please make sure your name is also on top of this piece of paper. Make sure you circle all your final answers. I know I'm trained as a teacher as I work with my students to look for those circled answers. And then give this work to your teacher on the next day of school. And I realize for some of you this might be after Thanksgiving break. But please hold on to this paper or these papers and give them to your teachers when you return. This is not a graded activity, but it's an activity that's a valuable tool for you as you prepare for your unit one, unit two assessments, and any other learning tools, learning assessments that your teachers have for you. So let's get started. I do wanna remind you that if you need to pause the video to take time to think as you work out these problems, please go ahead and do so. I know as I record these videos, I really don't leave enough time for thinking and working. So it's up to you to pause the video in between each question, in between each problem. So here's question number one, six parts. Each part refers to the number at the top. 967,481. Now, as you list your answers on your paper, you'll have a 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, and 1F. Make that clear to your teacher. 1A. The digit 4 is in the blank place. Well, you want to write a word. You either want to write the ones place, tens place, hundredths place, thousands place, ten thousands place, or hundredths place. You're not looking at the value of the digit. You're looking at what place it is in. Don't worry about spelling. 
as long as you're close. Your teacher will give you credit. Now I noticed one F is the one question that uses the word value. So make sure when you're doing one F, <coughs> excuse me, that you are putting a value. One F reads, what is the value of the digit six? So for one F, you will actually have a number. You'll have the number six, the digit six, sorry, followed by numerous zeros. Okay, I'm going to move to question two. If you need more time, please pause the video at this point. Question two, you are to write a number. You're writing one number, but here are the rules for that number. There must be a nine in the hundredths place, a two in the ten thousands place, a nine in the ones place, an eight in the thousands place, a zero in the tens place, and a four in the hundredths place. This will be a six digit number please put the digits in the proper order based upon the information listed for question two. At the completion of making your number, then we move to 2B. How many times as large is the nine in the hundredths place? Remember that would be 900 as the nine in the ones place, which has the value of nine. So what you're doing is you're comparing the number 900 with the number nine. Is 900 10 times greater, 100 times greater, or 1,000 times greater than the number nine? You can pause the video at this point if you need more time. Question three is a simple question. You are going to write the two numbers displayed and then in between the two numbers you're going to place the less than symbol or the greater than symbol, or the equals symbol. So please write both numbers and then the proper symbol in between. If you need more time, of course, please pause the video. I am going to move to question four at this point. Now, question four has two parts. Let's look at 4a. You are going to take the number 275,000. 264. You're going to round it to the nearest, well at first it'll be the nearest 10,000. Look at how many zeros are in 10,000 and you want your answer to also have that many zeros. Next you want to round that number off to the nearest 100 thousand. Again, note the number of zeros that the number 100,000 has.
And finally, for part 4a, you're going to round that number off to the nearest 1,000. Again, please note the number of zeros that 1,000 has. And then the final thing you will do, and this takes a sentence, maybe two or three, to answer. Part B, explain how you rounded 275,264 to the nearest 100,000. What did you do? What steps did you take? What digit did you look at first and then next? Okay, as I mentioned in my past video, pretend you're explaining how to do it to a five-year-old. The words you would say to that five-year-old would be the same words you would write down on your paper in sentence form. Now, I'm sure you're going to need to pause the video at this point to complete the questions in number four. So please pause the video now as you work hard on question four. I'm going to read question five now. Question five, you're simply showing off your knowledge and your skill in doing U.S. traditional addition. You have two. Part A or letter A is written horizontally or straight across the paper. I'd like you to write it vertically, which means up and down on your paper, similar to part B. This makes it easier for you to regroup. Remember, your teacher is looking for those regrouping numbers. Okay? We don't want to, you to simply grab a calculator to solve this. We want you to do paper pencil. And we know you've done it paper pencil when we see the regrouping symbols up at the top of each place value column. please pause the video if you need more time. I'm going to question six. Of course, question six, U.S. traditional subtraction. Additions, twin sister. Well, they may not be twins, but they're definitely related. So, you're going to use, you're going to show off your skills in subtraction. Once again, part A is listed or is written horizontally, which means straight across the paper. It is much easier to do the problem when it's listed vertically or up and down, just like part B is. Please remember, there's a lot of regrouping to do and we expect to see that regrouping, okay? And by regrouping, remember, you are crossing out a digit, going to the next place value, and regrouping that by sliding 10. It might be 10, it might be 10 tens, it might even be 10 one hundreds, but you regroup that to the right to help that digit in the lower place value column be great enough to do the subtraction. Make sure you do circle your final answer. Now, obviously you're gonna need a little time for this, so please pause the video because I'm going on to question seven now. Question seven reads, find the perimeter of the square. The two most important words in that problem are perimeter and square. Think about the formula for perimeter and think about the properties of a square. 
and that should help you find the perimeter. Now, as always promised, whether it be a unit test or the PSSA test, we do provide the formulas. So I'm going to jot down the formula for finding perimeter. L stands for length and W stands for width. This is the formula for perimeter. Part B, explain how you found the perimeter. As always, pretend like you're talking to a five-year-old. Verbalize or say your answer in words, then exchange that, put that into writing. As you write maybe two or three sentences to explain to your teacher how you found perimeter. If you have more work to do on this, please pause the video. I'm now going to move to question eight. Question eight. In gym class, Mr. D'Angelo, prefers it to be called physical education class. In physical education class, students were doing the standing long, long jump. Lance's jump measured five feet. He thinks he jumped 50 inches. Is he correct? Explain how you know. So you're gonna have to do a math problem. Then you're gonna have to say, yes, he's correct, because, or no, he's incorrect because, okay? We do provide formulas, as mentioned before. So let me remind you all that there are 12 inches in one foot. Okay. Go ahead and answer this problem on your piece of paper. You do not have to write the problem out on your piece of paper, but do show all the work that is necessary to solve it. You'll probably want to pause the video at this point as you continue to think through this problem. I will do question nine here in a couple seconds. Please pause the video if you need to. So here is the ninth and final question. Please remember to have your name on this paper. Please remember to have all the work shown. Please remember to circle your final answers and make sure this paper gets to your teacher the next time you are in school. Once again, have a happy and fantastic Thanksgiving vacation. All fourth grade teachers hope to see somebody from your household at parent-teacher conferences. Number nine, Safir had 150 markers. Visualize that as we speak. He gave 24, sorry, he gave 24 to Sophie. Visualize what's happening. 29 to Sharon and 22 to Jonas. And then he donated 68 to the class. How many does he have left for himself? A huge clue to tell you what mathematical operation you're going to be working on. How many does he have left? I know I bought four gobs, four whoopie pies for Martin's the other day. There were four in the package. I ate three. I know there's only one left. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to estimate our answer. 
make a good, I wouldn't call it a prediction, but it's a very good guess based on rounding numbers off. So we're going to round all our numbers off to the nearest 10 because 150 does end in a zero. And actually 150 would be 15 tenths. So think of this as 150 as we do our estimation, but then we wanna round 24 off to the nearest 10, write that somewhere, 29 off to the nearest 10, 22 off to the nearest 10, and then 68 off to the nearest 10. Now you write that here, you do your mathematical equation based on the four operations are you adding, subtracting, dividing, or multiplying. Remember, here's your huge clue. Okay. And then you'll end up with an answer. But that is not your final exact answer. That's your estimated answer. Then you want to go back and plug in somewhere, you know, somewhere else here, the real exact answer by now taking the actual numbers, doing the same thing as you did in your estimate. Did you add? Did you subtract? Did you multiply or did you divide? At that point, yes, a calculator can be used. Yes. Okay, as long as you're showing your work somewhere. Put that answer here and then explain how you solved the problem. Again, you're talking to a five-year-old. What, what did you do to solve that problem? Tell the five-year-old what you started with, what you did to figure out what is left. And then is your answer reasonable? That's a simple yes or no. And then explain how you know. I always tell my kids, hey, the exact answer is really close to the estimate. Or, hey, yes, it's possible to start with 150 markers and end up with whatever, okay? It's a simple answer. One sentence covers it. Now, this is the final question of today's Unit 2, Unit 1 combined practice assessment activity. So, when I sign off, of course, you can go back, okay? You can go forward, you can pause, but make sure the next day you go to school, you're taking in the answers to these problems. If you need help from somebody at home, that's fine. That's why we call this a practice. Hey, good luck. Hope to see you all soon. Hey, stay healthy, okay? Enjoy talking to you today. See you soon.